Hi friends, welcome back to another episode of Generation Films. My name is Alan. In this video, we'll be continuing our coverage of Avengers Endgame by looking at just exactly how time travel works in the movie. Because it's definitely one of the more important plot mechanisms in the movie, and it's really confusing. One of the craziest scenes in the film, which might not make sense to most consumers of science fiction, is when the future version of Nebula kills the past version of Nebula. In movies like Back to the Future, this becomes a major problem, especially when Marty McFly ends up attracting the attention of his mom, which in turn means she won't end up falling in love with Marty's dad, which of course means he'll never be born and fade away from all pictures. But if you think about this a little more, this actually doesn't make any sense at all. Because if Marty prevents his mom from falling in love with his dad, then he would never exist to go back in time in the first place to prevent them from meeting. This was known as the grandfather paradox. This is when an individual goes back in time, murders their grandfather before he's able to create that individual's father, which means that individual that goes back in time to murder their grandfather would never exist in the first place. I know, this is all very confusing. But this is exactly what Nebula does, but instead of killing her grandfather, she kills herself. Now, some physicists would argue that it would be physically impossible for the current version of yourself to go back in time to murder a past version of yourself. <laughs> It'd be similar to how humans can't just defy the laws of gravity and fly. Nebula also wouldn't be able to kill her past self because of the grandfather paradox. This would also mean technically you can't really travel in the past and change anything which creates a problem in the film because that obviously does happen when the Avengers perform their time heist. So how does Marvel tackle this problem? When they change something in the past, then that past becomes another timeline and is no longer a timeline to their current future. At the point they change something, a new timeline is created and branches off. This is what the Ancient One explains to Professor Hulk. She can't give him the Time Stone because if she did, then her own timeline would be screwed far before Thanos arrives because they would have no protection from the Dark Dimension. It's only when Professor Hulk mentions that Doctor Strange gives Thanos the Time Stone that the Ancient One finally agrees to give it away. After all, if Doctor Strange did it, then he must have had a good reason. Still, Professor Hulk promises to bring the stone back to this timeline as soon as they finish their mission. So the Ancient One's timeline wouldn't get screwed over. Although if you think about it, the Ancient One should have no real obligation to help another timeline and should only really care about her own. Because it seems like the Marvel Cinematic Universe lies within the many world theory spectrum. Which means there are infinite amounts of timelines and different universes. So when Warhammer knocks out Peter Quill and takes the orb from him, that changes their timeline and prevents the Guardians of the Galaxy from ever meeting. When Black Widow leaps off the cliff and Vormir giving Hawkeye the Soul Stone, that stops Thanos from going there and sacrificing Gamora. When Tony Stark, Captain America, and Ant-Man grab Loki's scepter and the Tesseract, they prevent Tony in that timeline from ever creating Ultron, which leads to the creation of Vision and a whole lot of other things from happening. And then the Tesseract is now also in Loki's hand, allowing him to escape. Now, in every one of these alternative timelines that they've created, they actually do prevent Thanos from winning because they've taken a stone out of that timeline. But by returning these stones back to the timeline, that actually gives that reality Thanos another chance. By now, I'm sure you're starting to see problems with this many world theory. See, instead of really being able to change the future or the past, what the Avengers are instead doing is running around and choosing the reality that best suits them. In a world of infinite timelines, your actions are actually quite futile. There will always be a past and future that goes against what you want. Instead, all you can do is choose the one that best suits you and live it out. This really does cheapen the whole idea of the Avengers saving the universe from Thanos. It makes their entire endeavor seem more self-centered in some ways, as if they were just running away from their timeline rather than trying to save it. The Many World Theory also works quite well, especially in a franchise like Marvel where you already have so many different timelines and versions of characters. But again, it makes the individual timelines seem a lot less important. But the most ridiculous time travel scene we see is when Steven Rogers goes back in time to return all the Infinity Stones. Instead of coming back immediately, he actually stays and lives an entire normal life with Peggy Carter. But then somehow he's able to find his way back to that same exact timeline and reappear on the scene as an old man. 
It would almost be impossible for Steve Rogers to find his way back to this timeline unless he actually traveled to the Quantum Realm to get there specifically. Because if Steve Rogers doesn't become Captain America, a lot of things would have happened differently throughout the course of history. For one, Falcon wouldn't be there to accept the shield from Captain America because Falcon was recruited to the Avengers by Captain America in the first place. So unfortunately, Steve Rogers can never really return to this timeline if he wants to be with Peggy Carter. Now, as a film, I thought Endgame was amazing, but the plot itself is a lot more complicated and problematic than at first glance. You see, this is why it's difficult to include time travel as a plot mechanism, because it's very confusing, and God forbid you do something wrong, you might end up in a time loop. You see, this is why it's difficult to include time travel as a plot mechanism, because it's very confusing, and God forbid you do something wrong, you might end up in a time loop. And God forbid you do something wrong, you might end up in a time loop. Wait, what's going on? And God forbid you do something wrong, you might end up in a time loop.